The number one behavioral change tool of all time is a good story. And what's really important about the work that's being undertaken at the moment here at Princeton is that we need to find a meaningful narrative or story that everyone can relate to. Why are we doing this? Why does it matter? So Princeton has a very ambitious sustainability goal. And to achieve that, there's a lot of work to be done. And a lot of that work is in the form of infrastructure and technology. So for example, the Geo Exchange program that's currently and has commenced being installed uh, across campus, where we're converting uh, the heating and cooling systems from steam to hot water. That's a big part of realising that sustainability agenda, but it is only one part of it. Another whole part is to do with behaviour. It's to do with the way that, that students, staff, faculty, the entire Princeton community actually interacts with the campus. So when you think about behaviour, particularly in the context of energy uh, and sustainability, the first thing to, to have in mind is that behaviour occurs at a system level. And what do we mean by that? is that if, if I'm interested in an individual's behaviour, it's not necessarily all that useful to just think about that individual. We have to understand all of the different influences that might be having an impact on somebody. And from a behavioural scientist point of view, these are things like social norms. What's the done thing around here, for example? What sort of culture uh, is in place in, at Princeton University? What sort of resources are available? What are the policy settings of the university? And what we do is we understand all of that. We have methods uh, of, of analysing behaviour at that system level, which primarily involves things like interviews from the students, faculty, staff, different departmental heads, uh, and everybody that has a role to play on campus. Uh, we do focus group sessions and other discussions. We consult the evidence and the literature. We tie in with other research groups on campus who are experts in the area of sustainability or behavioural science or in energy transitions because Princeton is home to some of the leading thinkers in the world on these topics. So we need to ensure we've identified those people and have them part of the team. In looking at all the different behaviours on campus that might be modifiable to bring about a reduction in energy, the behaviours that are actually occurring in the context of labs are right up there in terms of some of the biggest users of energy that, that come about through research and what's happening in the labs, but also the potential for modification of things like fume hoods and the way we close the sashes is probably one of the, the biggest areas of opportunity in terms of energy reduction on campus. When you see a fume hood, if, you know, not a teaching fume hood that goes off when there's no classes, but a re research fume hood that runs year round, 24 seven, you can think that it uses as, as much energy as a residential home. So I guess the most important part of this interface is to see that, like, the change in energy levels mm. instead of just like, here's like a graph of it. It's like to, to show like, this is how much the energy has changed now that you've yeah. closed the fume hood. We can have signs that say, hey, it's bad when it's left open, or we can have appear at like lab meetings and say, just remember everybody, please, you know, uh, shut the, sh uh, the sash because this is gonna be important. And that's, that's helpful, there's, there's a bit in that. But when there's a monitor which can clearly show in, in, in real time, look, by virtue of this now being shut, there's a, there's a material reduction in the energy consumption. That from a behavior change point of view is like the missing link. Princeton's willingness to bring behavioural science into its sustainability vision and strategy provides the perfect platform right across the university to essentially work out, look, how do we identify in such a big organisation like Princeton, what are the behaviours that are actually modifiable, who and, and where are these behaviours occurring, and how do we evaluate behaviour change meaningfully that works for everybody. And the result of that is that we hope that we can actually create a framework and an approach that not only creates impact here at Princeton, but potentially could be replicated or transported elsewhere. Because let's face it, this issue of climate change and sustainability is a global one. And what we need are good examples of how to go about approaching these problems, including behavioural science.